Welcome to the game group, I am Pal Fairy, and today, today, my friends, dear naturalists and gamers, we are going to explore a game that I think is very special. There's like two or three games that really inspired me to start the Game Grove. And this, this game is one of them. I uh, played the demo a long time ago. And I think that while I was playing the demo, I decided this might be a good idea. There's a couple of things I want to say about the game before we get started. Firstly, I don't have a lot of information on it. I played the demo a long time ago. And then purposefully, I have been avoiding news about the game. Heronil calls itself a reverse city builder. It is a game where you're not quite building cities, you're reclaiming wastelands. And finally, Free Lives, the developer, has committed to donating 8% of the Steam sale profits of this game to the Endangered Wildlife Trust. So if you like what you see today, I highly recommend that you go and download this game to support the developers. It is, I think, in my limited knowledge of it, a very beautiful game. And if it speaks to you, let it speak to you. I also have a pretty special announcement that I will make at the end of this video. This is going to be a short one. We're just going to kind of dip our toes in this, see what it's all about. I could go on, but I think it's best if we just start. This book serves as a guide to the intricate process of restoring an environment from a wasteland to a thriving ecosystem. The process is not always easy, and even with this guide you will need to experiment to understand exactly what needs to be done. In the pages that follow, you will find descriptions of the regions, flora, and fauna you are likely to encounter. The book also contains blueprints of machines and structures that will help you in your task. If you are successful, you will eventually no longer need this book. When that happens, I ask that you pass it along, that it may serve someone else. Good luck with your journey of restoration. I love this because I feel like this is pretty much what I do. There are a variety of, of approaches to wasteland reclamation. What is yours? Gardener, I want to create beautiful, vibrant light landscapes. Ecologist, I want to restore biodiversity and balance to the environment. Environmental engineer, I want to rebuild the ecosystem with sophisticated machines. I think we fall squarely into the ecologist. Yeah, let's just check it out. Any wasteland, wasteland reclamation should start with a wind turbine. Select and place one now. But this is very, this is reminding me of the demo that I've already played. This is very much a tutorial. It is asking us to foot, put four of these toxin scrubbers. So as you can see, this ground here is barren. It's dry. These toxin scrubbers is turning it into something akin to more fertile soil. Something pretty important in this game to watch out for is that everything works through this grid-like system, where our placement is really, really important. If we want to power something, it needs to be within the range of the powering structure. We can't really place the scrubber further away. And we can place it closer, but that also means that everything that is being highlighted in the red will not get the benefits. So we're trying to maximize the space that we can have an effect as much as we can. This is an irrigator. It can be rotated and rotating it will change the configuration of the um, area it affects. 
think I'm gonna start here because if it's telling us to put it here, I think this is the most we can get. A big straight line. Then uh, the one here I think makes sense like this. And the one here, we'll put it like this. I think that's a pretty efficient use of space, but this is the tutorial, so it is designed to be optimal. Increasing the landscape's greenery is your primary goal, but remember to keep an eye on your available resources. To begin with, get the greenery target to 30%. I think we can do that. I think maybe if we set something like this here, uh, I think a scrubber here. And well, there's a big overlap. But that's okay. I think we can... This looks pretty good to me. 29%. Okay, I think we'll need one more. Let's set it up here. And... Let's go over here. And let's go over here. And these are called irrigators. Okay. And I think this is what would make the most sense. This has unlocked a wider map for us to play with. And we've gotten a tree. I am so excited for this game. This game is the sort of thing we need more of. I want to be playing a lot of it. Reclaim 88 more greenery tiles to unlock. So we're working on an unlocking system. That means that today's video might just be spent working through this uh, tutorial. But you know what? That is okay. That is okay. There's something about this game that forces you to kind of like be okay with certain... You can't fully maximize the efficiency of everything. You you can try, and, and I think it's good to, but there's always going to be a little bit in the red. There's always going to be a little bit that doesn't quite add up, and I think ecosystems work like that. Uh, they have redundancies, and that's okay. Oh, I should have put in another irrigator first, because now I don't know. Yes, I should have I should have just put the irrigators first. Let me let me do that. And I think I think maybe a, a horizontal one here would be the most efe efficient. Yeah. Already not the most optimal approach. But it doesn't matter. Look at how much land we've started to reclaim. There's something so, so healing about seeing the environment turn green. Now we're going to try a water pump. The water pump will fill these canals with a certain amount of water and it requires i believe a certain amount of power so it will use one of the power slots here and we'll see how far it will it will push these these waterways so this is really interesting to me uh water both purifies and irrigates the the land directly adjacent to me these are kind of outside of the range 
of of our machines but still the environment is doing its own work i like that something else that i think is really interesting about this game and i think makes it really really elegant is the fact that we only have one currency maybe there's more currencies further down the line but every time we restore an area we will be getting this greenery currency this little leaf here but that is also what we use to buy the buildings so there's this constant ebb and flow of of your resources and i like that a lot i I really like games with complex economies that will, I don't know, spend a long time trying to um, make you invest in different ways and manage your resources in, in complex ways. But this is kind of complex too, and yet it is very simple. I think the result is really elegant. I really, really like this system. We need 81 more resources to unlock. I think we could maybe stand to create another turbine around here and I I like this right here and yeah And one more here. Hmm. Uh, I think maybe... Something like this. We have uploaded... Uh, we have unlocked something new. A calcifier. It will create new rock, which is the only place where we can build our wind turbines. So that's going to help expand our operation past our waterways. I don't think we need it just yet. But we do need to get to 75% greenery on the map before we have our next unlock. I think the most efficient way to do that might be... Yeah, just right here. And let's set up another wind turbine. Box and scrubber. I like that it lets you go a little bit off bounds as long as at least one tile is in in range I like games that are permissive everything about this game is just so beautiful to me it's peaceful. <laughs> the music. The music over here. That is pretty good. An excavator creates a new riverbed, but poisons the land around it. Oh, okay. More for that balance. I wonder 
What if we do it before? What if we excavate before we have terraformed an area? Maybe that is the first thing we should do. Let's try something. Okay, I like this here. Let's try a couple. No, no toxin scrubbers just yet. I am going to excavate first. Cool. And then I'm going to start positioning these. Oh, so it does, it does restart. So it's better to put them before anything else. Okay. Good to know. And another. Yeah, you know, like maybe one. Here. This riverbed is actually kind of in our way. But I think we can fit more if we do it like this. All right. So I want to make sure that every time I get one of these, it is at least 50. But more than 50 is good. And that's because uh, it, that's how much it costs us of this resource. Oh, it also projects how much it completes the, the percentage, the greenery coverage. Okay. Somewhat tempted to do that, but 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 what happens if I do this first? It's not very punishing it's it's creative you can optimize but it kind of makes you be at peace with lack of perception La lack of perfection I mean. reclaiming this landscape will involve wind turbines for power toxin scrubbers to clean soil and whatever okay this is the scenario that we just did we didn't have any biomes we just restored some greenery we didn't have any animals or, or climate, so I guess these mechanics start getting deeper and deeper. Once the backbone of the ecosystem is thriving, your next step is to increase the diversity of growing plants. Introduce fimbos, wetlands, and forests. You'll also need to begin to pay attention to the local climate. <laughs> I feel like this game is going to bring out a lot of work stories for me. Animals index, okay. Now it's asking us to start expanding the biomes. We want fimbos, which I guess are like grasslands or... Um, look, 
They have flowers and grasses. I'm, I'm guessing it's like a grassland or a savanna. They want forests and they want wetland. We already have 1% forest because of these little lone evergreens that have just randomly popped up. That's okay. That is okay. I... I want to keep expanding a little bit our... Hmm, that is not very efficient. Let's um let's put another water pump here. They should carry the water and keep pushing it up until this. I wonder if we can uh delete this thing. It's just kind of taking a power uh unit. It takes up a slot. So now that this has some water, we can use this calcifier. I would say maybe maybe here. Here we go. And now I think we can start filling in some of these corner corners before before we fully commit to making more complex ecosystems so far we are calling this greenery there's a couple of flowers but it looks like turf grass and that is not not exactly the best thing not for the environment i wonder how the climate mechanics will play in all right let me think let me think here we definitely want so 150 that is really good but i think that if we did something like this 58 it's not the most efficient but we can get some of this which so far nothing has really um, use stuff and then maybe just maybe we can find a, a more efficient shape for the top yeah it's gonna be something like this We have 800 and oh no we have more cool reclaim 150 more fimbo tiles to unlock this seems to be uh an upgrade on our irrigators and it's a hydropon hydroponium it needs access to water and it turns the area into a wetland which part of our map would make a good wetland? I think this would be good. This would be good. This seems to be really good. I need to... We don't have too many close to water. We'll have to think about this next time. Well, this is the most we can... Look at that! I wonder if we can go and, and like read into the engineering principles of each of these machines. Swarming bees will pollinate nearby greenery, creating finbos flowers. Alright. So we are... Kind of going for a pollinator. I well, this lone tree seems to seems to want that. Yeah, so this is mostly grasses and and shrubs, flowers, sun-loving plants. Usually, the first to move into an ecosystem. 
create 100 more ashy nutrients. Hmm, okay, I think I know what that means. Focuses sunlight, allowing for the starting of a controlled burn. Okay. I am a little bit nervous. Let's try it here. Start a fire here, I guess. Oh, I love that it uses solar power. It burnt down the machines. Interesting. Oh. Oh. Well, no matter, because where there is fire, there are nutrients returning to the ground. Uses nutritious ash to create forests. Can only be built on a burnt building husk. <laughs> we have a couple of those. Uh, let's uh let's do that here. And maybe here. And that is enough forests for us it seems but now we're kind of short on the fimbos and the problem is that we don't have the many lone trees here for us to put our beehives beehives however can also do pretty well on the edge of forests so maybe if we can place it here it takes 35 they're not the most effective like we're we're doing this at a loss of resources but that's okay that's what the resources are for wonder if there's a way to restore this without turning it into a forest let's see can we put a soil scrubber here it seems as though we can Okay, we have enough forest, and now we want a little bit more bimbos. I like this. This is this is a very dynamic map. This seems to be changing with us. We are restoring. We are burning. And there we go. I mean breaks even if we do it here so a little bit more fimbos here I am also gonna put one of these hydroponic sorry not hydroponic just a water pump still and I think a wind turbine here Hmm. Decisions, decisions. We have to. I think we need to expand our wetlands a little bit. So something that is... <laughs> really, really exciting to me. Is that where I work. I work out of um, a large park in, in Toronto. And we have three ecosystems. We have wetlands, we have forests, and we have not quite a fimbos. This seems to be unique in its own way, but we have a um, quite endangered ecosystem called black oak savannas. And the premises of them kind of work very similar to this. 
The Black Oak Savanna really likes fire, though. I don't know that it turns into a forest quite right away. There's like a process by which smaller plants move in first. But still. Okay. Let's let's get another waterway here going. And I think one more right here. What happens to the trees in the area? Hmm. The trees are resilient. This area wa has like poisoned ground now, but the trees themselves manage to keep the... I want to call it biodiversity intact. That is so cool. Let's put... Now that we have done our excavations let's put some toxin scrubbers because we don't want to be poisoning the land any further and I think one more right here that means that we can use these hydroponiums once we have some greenery okay so uh we kind of want an irrigator here looks pretty good and we would like another one Am I doing too many straight lines? Maybe I am. Let's do something more interesting. This... This should work. There's one tile in there that doesn't like it. But this fits pretty well. Let's go for something like this. Hmm. Now that we have those irrigators, we can turn them into hydroponics, and that should give us a bunch of wetlands. We have a research center. Reduces the cost of some buildings and unlocks the ability to manipulate the region's climate. And it wants us to construct at least one. Okay, I will get to it. But before we do, can we just finish the wetlands here? Because I believe that if I turn this into a hydroponium, that should do it. Not quite. We're still a little bit away, but I think this should do it. Okay. Let's build a research center. Does it pollute the land in any way? Just in case, I'm going to build it in this this little infertile bit. Now that you have learned the basics of restoration, you need to begin to address the regional climate. Yes. The climate is defined by these attributes. Right now we are only interested in humidity, but these will change in the future. Humidity affects wildflowers, migratory birds, fungi growth. Oh my god, there's fungi in the game. My excitement just climbed up another 35%. It, affer it affects fern growth, affects water lilies, that makes a lot of sense, affects salmon runs, and affects rainfall. And it affects all of the ecosystems we have unlocked so far. That is very cool. Reaching certain thresholds of attributes will have a br will have broad effects on the environment. <gasps> birds, guys, look, birds. Birds have returned. They're migrating. We've created a little oasis in the wasteland. Buildings that grow plants like the irrigator or beehive are also affected by regional climate attributes. The irrigator creates greenery. We know that. But 
it also has ide a range of ideal conditions, which is humidity between 30 and 70%. Okay. Okay, cool. Climate manipulation. Many buildings modify the climate slightly, but some, like this cloud seeder, change it significantly. Oh, now we're stepping into the area of geoengineering. This is controversial. Cultivating the right climate is an important step in our reclamation journey. Good luck. That's the thing. We're doing this with machines, and I think there's like a big resistance to to the use of like this sort of technology in in nature but there are tons of really cool technologies a lot of them are derived from indigenous knowledge right fire for example is the, the practice of controlled burns is something that it's something that like indigenous peoples have done for like time immemorial and continue to do in, in a way that serves the ecosystem. I, I am not opposed to using technology. I think technology is an extension of humanity. I think the problem is that we use it for all the wrong reasons. I think I think the potential for this is real. Okay. Let's go back to this. The cloud seeder, it uses surrounding water and ocean to encourage cloud formation and increase ambient humidity. Right now we're at 42% Okay This is going to increase it By another 15% And it's actually just pumping out clouds <laughs> There's some There's some thunder There's some lightning starting to brew I like this so much It is so solar punk now we have enough forests and we have enough wetlands but i think what we're missing is fimbos so let's let's unleash the bees Got us pretty close. Ideal plus five. Okay, so because now we are within the ideal range of the beehive humidity, which is between 40 and 60, we're getting a little bonus to the resources we get out of it. Interesting. Very interesting, actually. Minus two. Huh. Why? 25, okay. There we are. With plant life and climate re-established, the final step is to construct an airship by recycling your buildings. As you remove your presence, introduce fauna to the new custodians of this ecosystem. Oh. Yes, let's honor the more than human world. Recycling and leaving it behind moving on i love this so we're going to build an airship allows for the construction of the airship with materials recycled from other buildings and it wants us to construct it next to water okay we can do that uh there's some room here recycling silo recycles other buildings and stores a portion of their cost and returns a portion of their cost maybe do we need to restore do we need to recycle all of the buildings okay probably right Reach 10% recycling to unlock. Okay, so we've recycled some.
Okay. And look, look how it looks as we as we like leave it behind. We are leaving it to nature. I love this. Recycling drone. It travels along rivers to collect recycled materials from loading docks. Okay. I guess I guess I'm building one here. Loading dock. Loads recycled material from surrounding buildings and silos onto a recycling drone. Got it. Pound lock allows the recycling drone to travel up and down waterfalls. Do we have any waterfalls? I don't think so. Okay, we're gonna need a silo here. And we are going to need a silo... Here. And here. And here. I think it's really interesting how removing ourselves is part of it's part of the journey. Like, let, let nature do its thing now. Take it so far and then, and then let nature do its thing. I, ah, uh, I love this so much. I wonder what my co-workers would think of this game. Animal Observatory allows use of a sonar ping to encourage animal species to move into a habitat that is appropriate for them. Oh, it's so good. Okay, let's keep, let's keep recycling. Okay, we can... And the one right here and it catches a bunch of buildings. And right here. And one here. Observatory. Let's build this here. The final step as recycling progresses is the reintroduction of animals. New animal species will help maintain the ecosystem long after your buildings are packed away. Look, there's migratory birds. I'm assuming they're migratory because they're not stopping. Animal species need to be scanned for. Open the scanning panel here. This grazer lives in herds on wide open grassland. Hmm. What could it be? I've seen a couple of these in the park. Oh, this one. This small amphibian lives in the reeds of a wetland near a fimbos field. Okay. Use this button to scan for the selected species. Each scan will give you information about the suitability of the area scan. Okay. You'll need to find suitable habitats for at least three animal species. Good luck. Okay, well... Frogs, I'm guessing. Yeah, they're small amphibians. Uh, live in reeds of a wetland near a Fimbos field. There's some Fimbos wetlands here, and there's some Fimbos wetlands here. So let's scan and... And... I think... Here. Frogs. Yes. Cool. It's right there. Uh, 
there's something so therapeutic about this. Uh, use a sonar scan to uncover this. This grazer lives in herds on wide open grassland. And... So, like, but by grassland, you, do you mean grassland or do you mean, like, kind of like on the edge of Fimbos a little bit? Let's do it here. Deer. I've seen a lot of deer at the park lately. Look at them. All right. This large caniform's domain is a forest which contains a beehive and is on a hill. Okay. <laughs> I am guessing. I'm guessing this is a bear. <laughs> uh, it's on a hill, yeah? Um, forest on a hill. The oh, I don't have forests on a hill. Let's see what other there is. This web-footed waterfowl rests in a large lake when it's not flying. Okay, so we have lakes. I guess this is kind of a lake. This industrious rodent builds its home on a river near a forest. I mean... We do have some... Forests near rivers. Let's do it here. In range of river, yeah. So it, it doesn't read the river, okay. That's fair, that's fair. This predator prowls in a forest near a source of prey, so we need something else in the forest before we can get what I'm assuming is some sort of mountain cat. A forest with a beehive on a hill. The problem is we don't have a lot of hills. Anyways, we should probably No, let's let's finish finding the animals first before we start just bringing this back. Hmm. This might be a challenge to bring back. Interesting. We might need an excavator. The excavator changed. That's not the model we saw earlier. Just might need to do this and what happens if I do this? It's just widening the river. Why did why are these so much fancier than they were before? Okay, now I'm just wasting resources, but Okay. 
Okay, th those those were some bad moves. It's okay. It's okay. We're here learning. Let's put a water pump here. And let's start recycling some of these. Hmm, okay, wait. Yeah. I think I think I messed up a little bit. Let's put the recycler here. And I think we're gonna need another <laughs> excavator. Like so there we go. Because I suspect that we're gonna need some passage for our recycling drone to start gathering these things. Um, so let's recycle these. And we have one recycling drone. Let's. This will connect. And start being. Oh, there's deer now here too. So the animals propagate through the ecosystem. I like that a lot. Uh, okay, there's one here. There's one here. I have to put this one kind of away from everything, but. That is okay. Um, we still need one more animal. And I don't think we have hills, so let's not trouble ourselves with that just yet. Instead, let's focus on ducks. Should we try to find ducks? Here? Nope. Not enough of a lake. Interesting. An industrial rodent builds its home on a river near a forest. I thought that we did. I thought this was a river near a forest, but apparently it isn't. We don't have a lot of rivers near forests, it seems. And this needs a source of prey. Let's, let's think about this for a moment. We could extend our river. Let's try that. I think the forest will help prevent this. barren it's already fertilized and let's add a, a water pump I suspect this should help uh, and let's let's try to tr let's try for the rodent again it's a river it's more of a forest Is it a beaver? It's totally a beaver, isn't it? It's still not recognizing this as a river. Okay. What if we do this? Still no river.
Requirement partially met. How much of a river do you want? All right, we'll just we'll just have to make a river. Oh, I like these ferns growing on the cliff. There's so many details. This is so beautiful. <laughs> Okay, let's let's get through this though. Uh, one more time, let's go. Let's go for beavers. Really? How about here? I don't... I don't get it. Why don't you like this? Alright. There we are. Oh, we just had to click on the river. That is my bad. We've got the beavers. Look at them. We actually have some beavers at the park too. All right. Uh, let's finish. Let's finish getting out of here. So one more recycler here. Uh, and. Oh, we can't put it on wetland. Interesting. And let's put another recycler here. How are we doing on resources? I think we're pretty good. That's 85% recycled. Let's do one... ...here. And one here. And... ...one here. We're getting resources back, so it actually does recycle. It's not just saying that for no reason. One here. And one here. And uh, let's speed up the time so that our little, our little boat goes off and gets the rest of these loading docks. And... We're almost there. Oh, we're missing one. There it is. No plastic left behind. 100%. Let's go! Thank you for dropping by today the game just got released we are going to leave this ecosystem now wasteland reclaimed yes so guys this was terra nil if you want to share your thoughts leave a comment if you like this video like it if you like games and the environment subscribe or join the game grove on discord if you want to join the game grove on discord or if you want to drop by Twitch, I think I am going to start a new segment for this channel. And every Wednesday between 5 to 7 p.m. 
Eastern Standard Time, I will be streaming both out of the Game Grove and out of, I will be streaming out of Discord if you want to join and have a chat, or I will be on Twitch if you would rather just hang out and type out while we explore this beautiful game. Uh, I think it's a good opportunity to just hang out, talk about environmental initiatives or games. Again, this will be on Wednesdays, Eastern Standard Time, 5 to 7 p.m. And I think I'm going to name it Terranil and Chill. So come chill with Terranil on the Game Grove. And if you want to support this project, check out our Patreon and coffee. It would mean a lot. This has been Phil Ferry. Thank you for watching. And remember to hit pause and touch grass.